We talked to the two men for a little more than 20 minutes on Sunday. For the first half of the interview, we talked about the novel, their new novel, The President is Missing. We then asked Clinton about the Me Too movement and the recent suggestion by some critics that he should have resigned during the Monica Lewinsky scandal. And whether looking back now, if he would have handled that time differently. A few days ago, in response to, to critics who have suggested that you should have resigned in the, in the wake of the Lewinsky scandal, you said that you should not have. If, if you were president now, in 2018, with, with everything that's, that's going on with the Me Too movement, how would you have approached the accusations differently? Well, I don't think it would be an issue because people would be using the facts instead of the imagined facts. If the facts were the same today, I wouldn't. In 1998, President Clinton shocked the world, first denying, then admitting to an affair with then White House intern Monica Lewinsky. The scandal launching a lengthy investigation that ended with Clinton becoming just the second president ever to be impeached. You're asking, well, don't we have a right to change the rules? Yes, but you don't have a right to change the facts. Clinton says critics are now pouncing in light of the Me Too movement, but he stands by his decision to fight impeachment rather than resign. So a lot of the facts have been conveniently omitted to make the story work. But I think partly because they're frustrated that they got all these serious allegations against the current occupant of the Oval Office and his voters don't seem to care. I think I did the right thing. I defended the Constitution. You think this president's been given a pass with regards to the, the, the women who have come forward and accused him of sexual misconduct? Oh, well, I think that, uh, no. But it hadn't gotten anything like the coverage that you would expect. President Trump has been accused by numerous women of inappropriate sexual behavior, all of which he denies. I like the Me Too movement. It's way overdue. I think that it doesn't mean I agree with everything. I still have some uh, questions about some of the decisions which have been made. This March, Monica Lewinsky penned an op-ed in Vanity Fair, taking responsibility for her part in the scandal, but also admitting that years later, she was diagnosed with PTSD from the unrelenting public scrutiny. One of the things that this, this Me Too era has done, it's forced a, a lot of women uh, to speak out. One of those women, Monica Lewinsky, she wrote in an op-ed that the Me Too movement changed her view of sexual harassment. Quote, he was my boss. He was the most powerful man on the planet. He was 27 years my senior with enough life experience to know better. He was at the time at the pinnacle of his career while I was in my first job uh, out of college. Looking back on what happened then through the lens of Me Too now, do you do you think differently or feel more responsibility? No, I felt terrible then. And I came to grips with it. Did you ever apologize no, to no, Yes, and nobody believes that I got out of that for free. I left the White House $16 million in debt. But you typically have ignored gaping facts in describing this, and I bet you don't even know them. This was litigated 20 years ago. Two-thirds of the American people sided with me. They were not insensitive to that. I had a sexual harassment policy when I was governor in the 80s. I had two women chiefs of staff when I was governor. Women were overrepresented in the attorney general's office in the 70s for their percentage in the bar. I've had nothing but women leaders in my office since I left. You are giving one side and omitting Facts. Mr. President, I, I'm not I'm not trying to present a side. I'm not, no, no. I'm, you asked me if I agreed. The answer is no, I don't. And I, well, I asked if you'd ever apologized, and you said you had. I have. You've apologized. Already. I apologize to everybody in the world. It is important to me that everybody who has been hurt know that the sorrow I feel is genuine. First and most important, my family, Monica Lewinsky and her family. But you didn't apologize to her. I have not talked to her. Do you I, feel I like you owe her an apology? No, I do. I, I, I do not. I've never talked to her. But I did say publicly on more than one occasion that I was sorry. That's very different. The apology was public. And you don't think a private apology is owed? I think this thing has been, it's 20 years ago. Come on, let's talk about JFK. Let's talk about, you know, LBJ, stop already. I don't think 
President, you think President Kennedy should have resigned? Do you believe President Johnson should have resigned? Uh, Someone should ask you these questions because of the way you formulate the questions. I dealt with it 20 years ago plus, and the American people, two thirds of them stayed with me. And I've tried to do a good job since then with my life and with my work. That's all I have to say to you. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no question, it got a little bit yeah. heated there at the end. Yeah, and you know, when the cameras were off, the president acknowledged that the standards in society have changed, but also said that the standards should have changed from what they were 20 years ago. He also reiterated how the facts of his case make it very different from some of the, the high-profile cases that have been uh, spawned as a result of, of Me Too. So coming up in our 8.30 half hour, though, more of our conversation with former President Clinton and James Patterson, including what led them to team up to write that new book, The President is Missing. All right, Craig, thanks. Thank you.